Google just announced the launch of their open source MCP or model context protocol server for Google Analytics. Google Analytics is one of the world's most widely used analytical application by businesses of all size. And by creating an MCP server, they have made it super easy to now have a natural language led conversation with Google Analytics directly or even via a multi agent system. This MCP server will act as a bridge allowing LLMs like Gemini or Claude to connect directly to your Google Analytics data. In this video, I will cover the following. First, I will show you the end result of once this is configured, how will the business user or a business analyst or a marketer interact with this? Second, once you have seen that, then we will actually go into the configuration on how do you get your systems and everything ready to configure the MCP server. And third, we will show you how to activate this. So let's get started. To set the context, this is my website where I usually write blogs and articles. This is like a newsletter. So you can see that these are the different articles that I've written. And I have Google Analytics set in the back end. So you can see that this is how my Google Analytics page looks like. So what I'm going to do is I would want to now go into my Gemini CLI and I will demonstrate how we can have a conversation about insights and questions that I may have about users browsing through my website. All right, now I am in my VS Code ID. You can actually launch any ID of your choice. And the assumption is you already have the Gemini CLI available in your ID. Once you're here, then you use Gemini as the command and that's where you will see this. So for you to know what all MCPs you have already configured, you can click on this and you can see that here I have the analytics MCP, which is the official Google Analytics MCP available here. In this, you can ask a lot of different types of questions. You can get a summary of different accounts that you have connected, property details. If you have Google Ads connected to it, you can get the list of Google Ads, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some interesting questions. So what I'm going to say is use the advanced Martic property to answer my analytical questions. OK, so I'm going to ask it to ensure that it has read everything about that. And then it's asking me, okay, allow execution of the MCP tool to get the account summary. So I'm gonna say yes. So every time it has access for all the MCP tools to get that. So you can see now it is running the get account summary piece of it. And it has it it is now going to use the advanced Martech property for it to get for it to respond to my questions. So I'm gonna start with some basic questions. So for example, I'm going to say that, OK, what were the top articles that the users read over the last 24, 24 months? OK, I'm asking this question so that I can understand what were the the main articles that the users actually read. And it's a bit of a tricky question, right, because this is where the LLM needs to understand what I mean by articles. Right. So it has to make some assumptions. So let's see what it comes back with. So it's doing its job. And then there you go. It's fantastic. So it says that these are the article titles, agentic AI, Gen AI, number of page views, total users. Obviously, as, as soon as the agents have come, everybody's reading about that. And I exactly have that article written recently. So that, that's fantastic. And I can see that it is giving me answers very customized to the question that I'm asking. Now, maybe what I'm interested now is I'm actually interested in a more detailed level question, right? So I'm going to say that, okay, create a comprehensive report with insights based on the data for the last 24 months of data. I'm interested in understanding what kind of articles people are most interested in. What can be the improvements I can make in the website? So this is a very holistic kind of a question, right? You saw that I got an error about, about my quota limit of 2.5 Pro. So now it's automatically shifting to 2.5 Flash. But then now, you know, it is going to use a different model, which is again, pretty cool. Let's see what it comes back with. And there you go. So you can see that it has it is working on generating a detailed answer to the kind of question that I've asked. So let's see what it has come up with. So here it's saying, OK, overview of the top performing content, agent AI, retail media, elevate your MarTech AI arts levels, Google's Gemini and Gemma models. So depending on the size, right? So then it is giving me an insight around what is really performing well, right? So dominance of AI in marketing, I obviously 
write a lot about that and then i sometimes write about practical applications and implementation then focus on google's ai and analytical ecosystem so it's pretty correct so that those are the key insights let's see what it is suggesting about the website improvements do a little bit more search engine optimization i think i agree with that i need to do a little bit more on that and then intuitive navigation right this is where something else around strategic calls to action but some, when someone signs up, actually, they go to the thank you page. You guys can try yourself if you sign up on my newsletter. And I think, you know, th that shows a success. So I think what it is suggesting is in the thank you page, I could actually give them five more articles. So that way the users are continuously engaged. So I think it's a great suggestion. So there you go. You saw what kind of interaction you're able to do directly with your Google Analytics data. Now that you have seen the end result, Let's switch gears and try to understand how do we get to this, right? How do we configure this and how can we get a result like this? Okay, so let's look at all the steps that are required for you to be able to do this. So number one, let's look at the prerequisites. So you obviously need to have a GCP project which has billing enabled. Then you need to have admin access to the GA4 property. You need to also have the gcloud command line installed and configured. And then finally, you need to have the Gemini CLI installed, right? Once you're done with that, th then, you know, you need to quickly set up a service account within your GCP. This is, you come to GCP and this is where you, you go to IAM and admin, and this is where you go into service accounts. And then you click on this, and this is where you can go ahead and create a service account pretty quickly so you just need to keep provide some details over here and just click on done so once you have the service account make sure that you have copied that service account because you may need them the next thing that you need to do is you need to have the google analytics api enabled so for that what you can do is you can come back here and then you can type in google analytics Ad, admin API. So that's the first one that you need to enable. So I have already enabled that. And then the other one that you need to have is data API. So these are the two APIs that you need to enable, which is Google Analytics admin API and Google Analytics data API. So once you're done with that, then you need to go ahead and configure your Google Analytics account, which is where the service account that you had just created you will need to provide Google Analytics access to that particular service account. So I will now take you to Google Analytics. This is where you come to admin and here you go into property, property access management. And then this is where you add a user and then you basically copy the, the admin, the service account email, which you have just created and then keep it as a viewer and say and add right so i've already done that but these are the steps that you will need to that, that you will need to do okay so now you've configured your google cloud you have configured your google analytics and then from here there are steps which are in very clearly described in the github page of the google analytics mcp so the first thing that you will need to do is install pipx so this is where you can go to go to this website and it provides you detailed instructions so i'm using a chromebook so i have my linux basically use this particular command to install pipx so that's the first thing that i will need to do i have already configured the apis which i just discussed with you then this is a critical part right so this is where you will need to set up the set up the application uh, default credentials so you will need to do a gcloud auth login and then you need to impersonate the service account and this is where you enter the service account email that you just created right uh, and once you change that so you can copy this um, and then you can go to vs code and basically run this particular command and just replace this with the, with your service account so if i go to vs code this is where you type in the terminal and you're going to replace the service account email with your email. I'm not going to do that because I've already run this. The next step would be then for you to configure the Gemini CLI, right? So this is where the Gemini CLI settings file is. You need to go to, so here you can see that I am right now in this particular folder. I need to move, come out of this folder and then get into the Gemini folder dot Gemini. So if I show you, this is the dot Gemini folder. 
And then within .gemini folder, I have this particular file, which is the configuration file, which is settings.json. So I've already opened it for you. This is how you, the settings.json file would look like. And then what you need to do is you need to basically copy this and come here and then add, right? So as soon as you do this, you know, it, it will show you all the MCP servers which are available for the for the Gemini CLI. And that is what shows you as a list when you actually go to the Gemini CLI, right? So you do that and basically save it. And then once once you're done with this, then you go ahead and you go ahead and run this, right? So I'm going to go back to my Gemini CLI uh, folder and then I'm going to run Gemini again so that Gemini CLI will come in. Give me a list of MCP file, MCP servers that it is using, right? As I mentioned before, this if you had like more MCP servers as part of the settings.json file, you would see that. And then you can say you can say that you can also give this command to show you the list and then you can start having a conversation. These are all the steps that you will need to take. You basically have set up your cloud permissions, then you have configured the Google Analytics account, and then you install the Python picks, then configured the MCP server. And once you're done with that, you know, it, it is ready for you. I hope you found this helpful. MCP server is a great tool for any of the large language models to connect to Google Analytics. Google Analytics is so much rich with data, then you can really get amazing insights out of this. So if you found this video valuable, please let me know. And if you have any questions, please do ask in the comment section. And if you're interested in similar videos or any other topic, please provide your suggestions as well. Thank you very much. And I will see you in the next one.